This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. I'm back at the Bowlers Club of New South Wales for the June Symposium Resources Roadshow, where ASX listed companies get opportunities to present, have a chat to, and take questions from potential investors in a nice, relaxed, and informal environment. Presenting at the Roadshow tonight was Environmental Clean Technologies Limited, ASX code ESI, a Victorian based company that utilizes a process known as coal dry to convert lignite or brown coal into a cleaner burning black coal feedstock equivalent. The company the company's recently announced a major licensing agreement with the Vietnamese company Tincom, which is scheduled to be signed off on later this week, in fact Friday. Its business manager, Ashley Moore, is with me now. Ashley, welcome to ABN Newswire. Hi, Brian. Now, I spoke to your CEO, Cos Galtos, about cold dry before, but a quick refresher. How does it work? Uh, cold dry is essentially a dewatering process. It starts with a chemical reaction inside the lignite, which ejects both chemically trapped and physically trapped water. Uh, we use then waste heat recovery from a co-located power station to uh, evaporate that water, taking, for example, in Victoria's case, a 60% moisture lignite down to a 12% moisture black coal equivalent. So the, it's the moisture in the brown coal that produces the extra CO2 emissions? Uh, it's yeah it's burned. It, exactly as it as that lignite's burned uh, it takes more of the inherent energy of that material to evaporate off that water whereas we use a much smarter process to get rid of the water before it's combusted what does the finished product look like uh, it's um, it's e uh, extruded pellets uh, of the order of tw uh, 15 to 20 millimeter diameter uh, kind of like twisties but without the rough edges. <laughs> okay. Now Victoria has a heap of brown coal. Absolutely. So it's a good, a good place to start with this sort of technology. Absolutely. Now the Vietnamese deal, um, it allows you be, to begin commercialization of the coal dry process. Am Absolutely. Right yep. Uh, we have with the Vietnamese partner Tincom formed a joint venture company called Victoria Coal Dry Proprietary Limited. That's the licensing uh, that we'll uh, formalize this Friday. That, uh, that venture will be uh, at, at opening stage 50-50 with Tincom and ECT and that shareholding will remain for uh, all of the engineering phases of that project following financial close when, uh, when Tincom come up with the hundreds of millions of dollars to build phase one. That was my next question. That is then, uh, that's where ECT will dilute down to a 10% ownership and that'll be a free carry equity stake uh, for the rest of the life of that venture. Over the lifetime of the venture, what sort of revenues would ECT be expecting? Well, phase one, which is about a 2 million tonnes per year output plant, we're expecting from that $5 a tonne. Mm. So that's of the order of $10 million. Uh, escalating by CPI, so $10 million today isn't still $10 million five years from now. Uh, but as that, as that venture grows to 10 times that size, so 20 million tonne is the ultimate capacity of the, okay. the project, that'll be $100 million a year. We also hold a 10% free carry equity stake, as I mentioned before. So any dividends and also the asset, asset valuation, uh, they're also pieces that return to ECT and our shareholders. What was the clincher for the Vietnamese? Because this is very new technology, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, you know, part of the clincher is that Vietnam uh, isn't a short term focused country. It's looking out five and 10 and 20 years. It, Although it's a, a coal exporter today, it sees in the very near term those coal exports dwindling, not because they've got less coal, but because they're consuming it locally. So they're, having, they're looking at a future where they have a net energy import requirement. Mm. So they've worked with their local entrepreneurs to go and find sources of energy security globally. Tincom, with their, uh, their very forward-looking chairman, uh, Mr. Mr. Lung, he has uh, seen coal dry as an opportunity to, to get a head start on the rest of... Uh, you know the rest of the world and in so doing get some first mover advantages with uh, with his deal with ECT. Very forward looking. Now the, the coal dry plant's going to be located at Luoyang Power Station in Correct. Gippsland. When do you expect to turn the first sod? Uh, I would say depending on the speed of which we com with which we complete the engineering first sod might be you know late 2000 or you know, somewhere in 2012 towards the back end half two I'd say. I mean, apart from the uh, stuck in the middle of the reserves there in the Gippsland area, mm -hmm. um, why Luoyang? What, what was the, what was it about that particular site? I think it's fair to say that Luoyang have Luoyang mine in particular have the lowest cost extraction of the entire Latrobe Valley. They have very large reserves, and they're they're very interested in developing new sources of business, and they see additional coal coming out of their reserves. Uh, as a great contributor in that direction. Have you been able to strike any business deals with Luoyang? Luoyang and ECT have today an MOU which sets a path to uh, a coal supply agreement, which obviously we'll then uh, will vend to uh, our joint venture with Tincom. Uh, that also includes access to waste heat, site services, uh, location and so on. 
the plan would be to um, use the pellets as feedstock in Victoria? Uh, look, uh, I, I would say that's up to potential consumers in Victoria, what they decide to do with it. I know that Tincom's desire is to uh, have those pellets available for sending back to Vietnam, but if there's a higher value op opportunity in Victoria, there's no doubt in my mind that, that uh, the pellets will go there as well. There would be uh, some political interest, I would have thought, in reducing Victoria's CO2 emissions from uh, coal-fired power. I, you know, I, I, I think that's it's fair to say that today with the uncertainty in place, that uh, you know, while there's motivation, there's no significant driving event that's pushing people in that direction. Essentially, that would raise their costs. So when there is a political framework which sets the direction, I, I think the power stations will respond. Uh, and and I, I would be surprised if they didn't look towards coal dry as one of their solutions. What would be the trigger for that? A uh, Some sort of ETS, some, a some carbon sort of, tax? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, okay. Now, I'm guessing here, but other countries with large lignite reserves must be looking at ECT and the technology very closely. Absolutely, absolutely. We're already engaged with, um, with uh, parties in China, parties in India. We have a joint venture formed with a company in, uh, in, in Indonesia, East Kalimantan. Has a, you know, the, the company we're talking to has three to six billion uh, tonnes worth of high moisture subbituminous coal, so not lignite, but, but high moisture coal okay. nonetheless. Yep. Coal Dry works with those reserves as well. Uh, we're dealing in Poland, uh, we've had communications with, uh, with folks in Germany, folks in Greece, all with high moisture coal reserves that can find application with Coal Dry. Is there anything else similar out there in the marketplace in terms of, uh, of the Coal Dry process? Yeah, when you say similar, I think Technically, there are a lot of technologies that can remove water, can dry coal. The thing with uh, ECT's coal dry technology is that we do so economically. Uh, we do so with a net reduction in the carbon footprint of using those coal reserves, and we can make money in the process rather than just act as a cost. I'm casting off into the future here. You would be looking at building plants all over the world? Absolutely. Where there is a lignite reserve, where there's a high moisture subbituminous coal reserve, uh, we're going to be looking for business opportunity. This is obviously really good news for the Victorian economy and I guess flow on to the Australian economy, investment, jobs, infrastructure development and environmental benefits and the royalties. I mean, it's Absolutely. a win-win-win-win, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, I think you're also forgetting the engineering expertise that goes into building coal dries has started in Victoria, so uh, that's going to be another segment of growth, but also funding the projects. There's a large financial centre in Victoria that, that can participate in, uh, in the initiation of those projects as well. Does Victoria have the kind of infrastructure you'll be needing or, or are you looking at building more? For phase one, uh, we've confirmed with various uh, government sources that there is sufficient export capability to move the, move the product material of, of two million tonnes of, of, of that order through uh, the rail system to bulk port facilities. Um, we could get most of phase two, which would take the plant up to five million tonnes. But beyond that, there would need to be some fairly significant investment in infrastructure. But I'd say it's, it's not just driven by coal dry, but driven by other activities as well that, that are seeking uh, bulk export uh, facilities, both rail and port. One of the things I do like about the process, just personally, is the water is a, you're getting lots and lots of clean water out Absolutely. of the process, yep. which I guess what can be used for other industries in the area, which means there's less water being drawn out of natural reserves. Absolutely, there's two facets to the water story uh, with coal dry. The first and the most obvious um, is that the the heat we use to evaporate the water off the surface of the coal is the, the is the heat that would otherwise be ejected up cooling towers. Uh, Luoyang Power Station, for example, throws up 300 litres a second, Indeed. and we would be tapping that. So it's a water saving for Luoyang, which means they tap less local reserves. Right. There's also the secondary piece, which is a water recovery technology, and that's something that we can add on to coal dry. It is part of coal dry technology, but we can choose when and how to implement that. You spend money on it in terms of uh, in installing the equipment and, and uh, operating it, but you get to recover then a, a high quality distilled class water, which is a very high value, uh, you know, a little bit of filtering and it's potable so you, people can drink it, mm -hmm. or a, a, an even higher value is you can use it in boiler uh, feed water systems which require very high quality treated water. Good news all round. I better let you get back to the crowd. Oh, you're in massive demand tonight. There are lots <laughs> and lots you. of questions. We dragged you out to have this chat. Very much appreciated. Ashley Moore, Business Manager with Environmental Clean Technologies. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you very much. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.